Welcome back to your August 2024 edition of What's New in Asana. Today we'll be going through the latest updates and features from Asana's August release. We'll be exploring new stacked bar charts, the notes view in projects, the new sandbox environment for testing new features, and much more. But if you're new here, welcome. My name is Marquis e. Murray. I am the CEO at Surface and an Asana partner, and I make videos like this every single week to help you get the most out of your Asana investment. So if you find these videos helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Now let's get into the demo. I'm gonna start off by showing you our stacked bar chart. So here we just have a basic project demo up and we're gonna get into the chart. So we're gonna start by going to dashboard right here. And then when we go to add chart, we're gonna see something a little bit different. Before we had access to bars, donuts, lines, burn up and, and numerical charts, but now we have this option for stack bar charts. And so what it does is it gives us an additional variable that we can add to the X axis. So in this case, we're looking at tasks by priority, grouped by task status. And then on the Y axis, we're looking at the task count. So we can see we've got, um, 11 tasks total here, 18 tasks total and 13. And you can see the breakdown here based on the colors. And so it's really nice to be able to filter different information and see the exact information that you're looking for. And of course, you can change the custom field to whatever you want. And so if there are variables, as long as the data has been put in there via the custom field, you can now use stacked bar charts to see that information. So really cool update. Next, we're going to go to the notes view inside of Asana projects. And so we have lists, we've got different boards and Gantz and, and calendars and dashboards, of course. So now when you click on the plus sign, you'll see along with workload, that'll be for another video, you'll see the note view here. So if we give that a click, you'll now see that you have basically what is a project description or a task description, I should say. You can use this for meeting agendas, you can use it for project backgrounds. And as I'm hovering, you'll see Asana is giving you some prompts that you can use to help you get started. So if this was to be used as a meeting agenda, you can simply click on that and it gives us headings, some nice little emojis and some bullet points to get us started. So you can then go in, you can rename this notes to meeting agenda and maybe this is a weekly meeting agenda. And so we could just have a run on like so. We can add um, additional notes here and use that for a different purpose, right? And so we can, can kind of keep going. I, I've reached my limit for views in this case but we can have multiple note views. And so one thing that I don't love about this just yet is we still can't collaborate within these notes like we would in a Word doc. And so there may be some cases where you have designated note taker and they're the person responsible for updating these notes or putting together the project background. Uh, but if you do need to collaborate in real time, I would suggest taking your Google link, uh, going to our app or going to the task, I should say, and then importing that link from your Google Drive or, or your SharePoint so that you you can collaborate inside that task, but then still have it inside of Asana. You can always just link it to your meeting notes section as well. So, so a really cool update, but I still think Asana's got some work to do when it comes to collaborating on Word docs real time within the platform. The next thing we're gonna look at are sandbox environments through the admin console. So I'm gonna switch over here for a second. And so basically what sandboxes are, it is a place where you can safely create, test different things in Asana before rolling them out. So if you're working on a complex integration or testing a new workflow, you can safely migrate all of that information within the project over to your sandbox, test it there, figure out um, the best ways to approach it. If you're doing any kind of process optimization, this is a perfect place to do this in a safe environment. And we'll note, as it says right here, this is for enterprise plus tiers only. And so if you're not an enterprise plus tier, you're not gonna have access to this. And so what it will look like is when you go into your admin console, you're going to see sandboxes right here underneath apps. And you'll have the ability to then request a sandbox, right? And then once you come to your avatar and hover over it, you'll have your main working space, your organization, and then you'll have your sandbox here, okay? And so you can have um, access to sandbox. You can still invite people like you would in a normal organization or a workspace. You can test data in there via the import, uh, the CSV import, I should say, and then you can also delete sandboxes. I will say that if you do need to delete the sandbox, all the information then is gone from that sandbox. You can always recover the sandbox, meaning you can, you know, pull in, you know, the naming convention of the sandbox, but all of that data will be removed 
from the sandbox. And so just keep that in mind, but a really cool step in the right direction for any developers or people in IT that need to test and validate changes or updates before actually going live inside of Asana. We call this our working space versus the, the production space. As many of you already know, I run a consulting company called Surface, which is a proud Asana partner. We specialize in a variety of Asana services, including training and workflow optimization. Whether you're in the process of introducing your team to Asana because you're transitioning over from another tool, or you're already using Asana but feel like you're not quite getting the most of its potential, we're here to help bridge that gap. Our training is tailored to fit your team's size, workflows, and skill levels so that you can get the most out of your Asana investment. Head over to surface.com for more information or book a connect call using the link in the description. All right, next we're gonna be looking at the multi-filter view inside of calendars. So I'm gonna to go to our calendar view here in our website launch project. So here we just have a bunch of tasks, right? We've got our marketing strategy finalization, we've got our social media campaigns, we've got email campaigns, and it's all kind of all over the place. And we wanna hone in and figure out um, what's going on with certain aspects of this campaign or the tasks within this project. And so if we go to filter, you can add filters now. So the first thing we'll do is we wanna filter by project stage, all right? You wanna see how many um, tasks are in, let's just see here, spec needed and QA, right? So these are the tasks that are required for specking and you know are ready for QA. So our QA uh, specialist can come in and do what they need to do. But then we can also add an additional filter here where we can, you know, just say add priority. So if we wanna see all of the not urgent or all of the high priority tasks that are within these two project stages, we have that ability now and then of course course, we can save this as a, a new view as well. And again, we didn't have the option there because I've already used up all my view spaces. But that's a really cool update because now we can filter by multiple custom fields to get exactly the information that we need. And now the last update we're going to look at is goal progress over time. So I'm going to switch over to our demo space for that one. So if we go into our goals, we already know that we can update the status of goals and report to the, the goal followers and the collaborators on what the goal status and changes were. But now we can add some nice visuals to it so we can see what's happening. So if we kind of zoom in here, you know, we can see that, you know, this goal started on, on May 4th, 2022. And then there were some updates that came along the way. But since this update, we can see that, you know, on March 18th, there was this green status, meaning that the, the goal was on track. And then on March 24th, uh, we're at 51% of our goal and the goal is still on track. So here we are today. I'm going to go in, I'm going to update this goal. I'm going to say this goal is now at risk. Something happened. Here's our summary from last time, but let's pull in some highlights here, figure out some information. And there are no highlights because I'm in my demo space. So there was no actual movement. So let's just say this goal is off track. No, it's not. Is at risk. Let's discuss and you know, there'd be a full summary, there'd be what's blocked, there's like what's coming next. And so we can obviously add those headers like so and then what's next and we can then post. And so I'm gonna post this, it's gonna go out to 16 people here. And now we can see that today we're orange. So what's nice is over time, we're not just seeing, you know, just the updates and, you know, being able to see, you know, what the current state is. We can see what the changes have looked like over time as well. And from that, we can start to figure out if there are patterns, I mean, if there are trends based on time of year or resourcing or whatever it may be, because obviously priorities change along the way. But, and so this is it for August roundup of what's new in Asana. I know we've covered a lot today. I can't wait for you to go and check out these changes for yourself. And I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know which of these new features you're most excited about. Let me know in the comments below. But before you go, don't forget, like, subscribe, and share this video with your team. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.